Welcome back. I have to say that little one stinger sounds like a like a Kanye stolen riff to me. That it sounds like something he'd go he'd rap something bizarrely egotistical and strange and yet uh, art, uh, artificially Christian um, over it. I, this is how weird the week is. This is uh, I'm going to read you the title of an article from Bloomberg. This is an uh, this is Bloomberg. This isn't something on uh msnbc or on you know uh financial like our raw story or something like that trump dines at mar-a-lago with rapper ye and a white supremacist okay yeah that's 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 how trump ended his week um um uh ex-president says he didn't know people that kanye west brought with him Nick Fuentes is known for white nationalism and anti-Semitism. He's not known for it. He brags about it, kids. His clips, I have to say, that like on my regular live stream, I cover a lot of weird people. I cover a, a good, decent amount of awful. And, and interestingly enough, probably the person I have the hardest time covering on my channel for the sort of virulent awfulness of what they say, where I have to like weed out some clips because I'm like, this might get me a strike. Yeah. is Tucker Carlson. Shut up. Yeah, that of all the things that are said, the mo the the most unabashed in, in his awful oftentimes is Tucker Carlson. And it's ironic because he's on Fox. He's got the biggest reach. There are small YouTubers and other people who are in line with him that wouldn't dare say the things that Tucker Carlson says online b because yeah. they get kicked off, right? Um, then there's the, what I would call the bit shoot crowd. They hang around near the, you know, the the butt knuckle of Rumble as well. But mostly they're on the, you know, the BitChute is the Craigslist of YouTubes. And it's one of these places where it borders on just like dark web postings um, where you just find like, you know, banned documentaries about the Clinton uh, yeah. death uh, list or whatever, that kind of stuff. And, um, and Fuentes has a streaming show that he does on there. And... It's there are clips on there where I'm like, I would address some of this stuff, but he can't go four sentences without saying something so awful that a it's it's infuriatingly disgusting. But also it, it it's so it's it, he's speaking, he's preaching to a particular choir. There's some people where they have a reach. And so it's important to people, I think, through my show, that people know these people exist. They know where their uncle heard it first or where their cousin heard mm -hmm. what's being said. You know what I mean? So some of these things uh, launch through, you know, these, you know, Alex Jones or or Russell Brand or some of these folks. And you're like, oh, that's where they heard it from. Or that's where it originated. And they've heard it through Fox News because by the time it reaches uh, Fox and Friends, it's been repeated in a loop yeah. through the, the right wing. A horrible, tragic game of telephone. Yeah, exactly. Where, by the way, they, they've got someone taking notes because the alignment between what's being said and what's, you know, being broadcast is amazingly sharp. On the, I will say on the left or center left or whatever you want to call the, uh, you know, sort of liberal and progressive worlds, there's a lot more fluidity. Because people are emotional in their reactions to things. So you'll see a lot of like, you know, police shooting stories where the details will get, will outrun the narrative or the narrative will outrun the details for a while. And then people go, oh, that's not actually what happened. And so there's kind of a, you know, mix there. The Republicans, it's the exact opposite. They, they decide what they're going to craft about saying this, you know, whatever it is. And then they'll only find facts that back that up. And then they... They sidecar them and it follows them all the way up the chain. So they're all referencing the same video or same article or same study to a person, whereas mm -hmm. there's a lot more fluidity in the rest of media and everybody else. So um, the, uh, the this former President Donald Trump dined this week at Mar-a-Lago Resort with uh, Kanye West. I'm not calling him yay or ye because it's just – Yeah, it's weird. It's It's – it's goofy. It's like, I don't call mm. you by a nickname unless I know you. That sounds like a nickname. So I'm just going to refer to you and by your full your name. nickname over and over is so strange. Oh, my God. Especially if you change it all the time. Like the whole like Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Padiddle, you know, um, <laughs> Pusillanimous, whatever the whole. Uh, at a certain point, you're like, simmer down, dude. 
It just, yeah. what I'm, a, na- a proper name is what I'm supposed to call you with some consistency. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is, this gets dangerously close to making up your own pronouns, you know, and, and, and considering these people apparently hate that. Um, uh, Car- let's see. Um, Karen Giorno, a former senior advisor to Trump's 2016 presidential campaign, confirmed that she had dinner on Tuesday with Trump, Nick Fuentes, Kanye West, uh, at, and other and an other an additional person she didn't know also attended. She had dinner with someone, and at the end of dinner, she didn't know who they were. Like that. If you want to talk more about how of just ignoring somebody, well, you got to understand who she's dining with. She's eating with Trump and Kanye West and Nick Fuentes. Do you think any of those guys care about the names of anybody else at the table except themselves? No. Oh, my God. It was like, it, and again, it. all I can picture is the Skeksis when they're just like eating bugs and eyeballs and stuff around the table. Trial by stone, right? Um, by the way, Brad in our chat room is saying, please call him Brad Cougar Mellencamp from now on. So yeah. um, I agree. I have to say, I like John Cougar. Um, as a name. And then when he went to John Cougar Mellencamp, I was cool, but it was like, uh, it just felt like one of these, like, think of me as an artist. You're like, we already do, silly. I don't care if that's not your real name. Paul Stanley's yeah. real name is Stanley Eisen. John, Gene Simmons' real name is Chaim Vitz. And you're like, get out of here. Just stick with it. We're cool. Yeah, people <laughs> change their names. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I love the fact that she didn't know the who the other person at dinner was. They, and by the way, That's either true, and she didn't even get who this person was, or they're more awful than Nick Fuentes, and she doesn't dare say it out loud. That I mean, that's an honest possibility that the that the other person there was like, look, you can say I had lunch with Nick Fuentes, but don't mention this person. You know what I mean? Like it is very possible. Um, So Trump said uh, that. Kanye West asked for his advice concerning some of his difficulties, <laughs> in particular having to do with his business. What difficulties? He got kicked to the curb for being anti-Semitic. It's not like he he misplaced a decimal point in a pile of zeros. Good Lord. Yeah. We also discussed, to a lesser extent, politics. That's I guess that's the part where Kanye West suggested he be his VP, where I told him he should definitely not run for president. Any voters you may uh, have... Uh, He goes, any voters you may have should vote for Trump. Anyway, we got along great. He expressed no (laughs) anti-Semitism. Oh, nice. (laughs) Isn't that sweet? It didn't come up. I hope people walk away from dinner with me with that same vibe. Yeah. How was your dinner with uh, Johnny? Well, it's great. We went to this great little restaurant, this bistro that his friend picked out, and we sat there and stuff. And he, he, he at no point did he stab anyone with a fork or 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 blurt out any racial epithets in yeah, the middle I'm of the restaurant. I think he may not hate Jews at all. Yeah, right. I, like, how do you? That has to make the list. That's a bad lunch. If you yeah, have to make there. the, yeah. If that that <laughs> if you have to bring that up, oof. All right, we got to take a break. Uh, it's the Health Park Radio program, Mega Worldwide. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching or viewing us on the interwebs. You can go to infotainmentwars.com and subscribe there. Help us to get to 45,000 subscribers. We're almost there. And I would like to bypass 45 and go straight to 46. I would like to stay at, you know, at 45 as little time as possible for obvious right. reasons. We'll be back. By the way, I would like to say for the record, uh, Johnny Million, um, that... Uh, at no time, in case anybody ever, you know, even thinks this, have I ever had uh, dinner with you and you've brought up some, you know, you've brought some person with you that later turned out to be a massive MI, uh, anti-Semite. I just want to say that. I, yes. In case any, like, just to be, just to clarify, uh, as a matter of fact. Yeah, so far, that is true. I, 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 I'm trying to think if anybody that I've ever hung out with you with that you introduced me to is a is a closet or overt awful anything and I I'm proud to say I can't think of a single thing you know what I mean some of them yeah. I think one person yeah. actually admitted to liking cheesecake in front of me and another person toyed with the idea that circus peanuts are actually meant for human consumption but I think that's the worst of it and and by the way had I known that ahead of the meal for my own image and my standing in the community, I probably would not have sat down at the table to start with. I'm just saying you have to have standards. Just because of circus peanuts? Come on. Ugh. 
Don't even. Never understood those. Oh, I have a vivid so... mem memory as a child. Like they were always like on the bottom shelf oh. on the, in the candy aisle. I just remember going up and pinching them when I was right. a kid. I, I didn't like them, but I was like, I think they're soft. Yep. Yeah, I th yep. And, you know, I, I have to admit, I was not a fan of Peeps for a long time until I roasted them. Because if you roast a marshmallow that is caked in sugar, it's caramelized. Oh, and I a caramelized roasted marshmallow is spectacular. Peeps were designed to be roasted. I stand by that to this day. Cheesecake and you is get the advantage of it looks like you're burning a little bird. That's right. Yes, that there is some that little bit of yeah. You, know, you have that moment of of a teenage Jeffrey Dahmer. You can prurently be awful. <laughs> I suppose. Thanks for bringing that up, buddy. Um, Again. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Trump announced that he's uh, running for president, and it's amazing mm. how no one cares. No, or like if they're in the circle of people who are supposed to care, they're poo-pooing it. Oh, yeah. The uh, evangelicals, uh, a group of six megachurch pastors, um, obviously not the big dumb ones we hear about all the time, but the ones that actually have big functioning churches that nobody hears about. And partly the reason why you don't hear about them is because they don't tend to say the, uh, we got to burn these books and burn the people who wrote them stuff. Uh, so they don't tend to make the news, but they have a big influence in the evangelical world and amongst a lot of these folks. And and a, and a, a gaggle of them got to. Somebody's asking me about angel food and sponge cake. I'm totally fine with those, um, but uh, I I don't eat them. But I don't have any. You know, I'm I'm not sure. averse to the yeah. But so one of the big talking points was, and next week on Twitter is going to be a very big deal apparently because. Uh, according, uh, uh, Elon Musk is a, is going to give a blanket amnesty to people who were permanently banned from I mean, no. Twitter at some point, which by the way, includes the Nick Fuentes folks of the world, people who have been sure. kicked off for blatant racism, anti-Semitism, calling for violence. Like, you know how, one of the complaints that you hear on the right all the time is that I don't like the the mullahs of Iran have a Twitter account, but I can't, right? This person can't. Well, interestingly enough, I don't know how they managed to do it, but as awful as the mullahs of Iran are, and they are awful, they managed to be able to speak within the terms of service of, of Twitter, right? They manage somehow to limit what they say in social media to the stuff you're allowed to say. Amazing. Um, yeah. Um, Dennis, I will get to that. Uh, brings up something about demand destruction in, in diesel. I think you're absolutely right. We'll talk about that in a bit because I have an oil price thing that I want to bring up. But one of the things about Twitter is, is that if you have a vocabulary that doesn't include some of the worst language that humans use amongst each other, you can talk about anything. You just can't use those particular words to do it because they're particularly awful. If you're cur there is a dude and I, I'm not going to mention who he is on YouTube, but is all into racial superiority specific to a group of people, specifically people of Germanic roots dude constantly. He's British, but he's got German family. That's where he comes from. He lives in England, got a British accent. And he talks all the time about different racial groups and their diminished intellectual capacity because of genetics and stuff. All the stuff that Nick Fuentes would get kicked off for. But he does it in a, in a way that linguistically would never trigger an algorithm. Uh. He doesn't use any of the buzzwords. He doesn't use any of the, the standard fare references from, you know, the like the bell curve or you know racist oh, iq yeah. test from a long time ago he's very particular and the language is nearly boring but he has a huge amount of views and he gets yeah, around yeah. the algorithm simply because he doesn't use like obvious rubber mallet awful language right yeah and that's that's true on twitter too there's a lot of accounts and i personally don't reshare them when i find them because that they get boosted and they stay. They'll never get kicked off because they know how to not violate the terms of service stuff. So bringing attention to them will only boost them. Other people, there's a certain point where you can boost them up and you go, look at this person. 
what they said should have been, you know, it might have slipped by the censors or slipped by the, the, you know, the terms of service folks. Because And they're using specifically violent language. They're using racial mm-hmm. epithets. They're doing that stuff. But they don't get kicked off just because they were operating below the radar. And then you draw attention to them and they get kicked off because they're violating the terms of service, right? Just nobody saw it. Or they meant there are other people who aren't violating the terms of service. They're just saying all this stuff in a way that allows them to get around it, right? And so drawing attention to those folks doesn't help. Because they will never violate the terms of service. And the only way you can deal with those folks is to ignore and mute, really. Mm-hmm. So that's that's just part of it. So, but Musk this week apparently is gonna let people who've been, you know, got you know, been kicked off permanently back on a general amnesty is saying, which means if you were kicked off because you uh were you posted stuff because you were vaccine hesitant. And somebody overreacted and thought you were a vaccine denier, you'll get back on. But at the same time, if you were insisting that ivermectin is a cure all and that people, you know, that Trump was right about injecting bleach in your lungs, or you or you're one of these people who talked somebody into eating fish tank cleaner to try and cure themselves of COVID, and you're still convinced that's the best way to handle it, you'll be welcome back on to the network as well. And if you're the Nick Fuentes of the world, arguably same thing. Uh, no, Vina, it's not that person. It's a, it's an unknown person. Uh, um, I uh, honestly, if I brought the, somebody in the chat room was asking me if it was a certain British person who got kicked off. Uh, it is not that person. That person will be welcomed back on. The person I'm talking about has never been kicked off. And there's a bunch of those folks and they never will because they get around it. So, but Musk is going to do this. Also, Musk talked about last week, bringing Trump back. You know, he, he opened Trump's account back up and verified yeah. it and left it open again. Now, the the hilarious part about that is it dropped traffic for about four days on Truth Social, like the traffic on there cadavered. And if you want to destroy Truth Social, all Trump has to do is post on Twitter once because there's no reason to hang out in that cul-de-sac of crap at Truth Social yeah, basically, if you, if, you, if you can play in a bigger sandbox, and since it, it's basically like trolls can't troll each other, and they really do get a feeling for how, I mean, that, that whole group, the truth social crowd, the people who are really there, that's a, it's a, it's a group of trolls. That's, that's how they found Trump. They like his ego. They like, they like how he crap talks people without caring. And so... They, and hey, they're going to be a billionaire someday too, so they may as well support this billionaire. Totally right. Who's totally a real billionaire? And the the thing is, though, it's no fun. You can't troll each other, right? They're all on the same team. It's boring, right? It's all just a it, it's just a cheerleader site for Trump. That's basically all it's for. Yeah. So Musk, and you know, it reigniting the Trump account. If he says anything and those people go, oh, he's going to also, whatever he puts on Truth Social, he's also going to put on Twitter. Well, I can be on Twitter and and own the libs and stuff at the same time. That's where they're going. They're heading to Twitter. That's that's what's going to end. And Musk knows this. He can't not know it. And so anybody who put money into, you know, the Trump media group is going to lose their shirt. I mean, they've already lost, but they're going to like there's it'll go to pennies on the dollar. Serious thing. And then following it up, uh, Musk announces that he would back DeSantis for president if he makes a run in 2024. Um, and he called, wait for it. He called, he said he would back somebody like DeSantis who's sensible and centrist. Oh. Right. Because he's a lunatic who, uh, like smokes uh, more pot than the than the van in Fast Times at Richmond High, wow. um, and and his logic centers are being fried these days. It's obvious. Um, he said Friday night that he would support Ron DeSantis if he ran for president. Musk, in a series of Twitter exchanges, elaborated somewhat on his political views, saying, "My preference for 2024 is someone sensible and centrist. I've I had hoped." That would be case for the Biden administration, but have been disappointed so far. But and by the way, um, 
his dad made all of his money. Musk's dad made all of his money uh, in apartheid South Africa. And, uh, you know, we're, we're literally talking about funds made off of blood diamonds. So the idea that this guy can talk about what's sensible and centrist is hilarious. Yeah. Um, he called himself a significant supporter of the Obama-Biden presidency and reluctantly voted for Biden over Trump. And by the way, if you reluctantly voted for Biden over Trump, uh, I don't care. You did. Yeah. And and the idea that he w- he's not going to vote for Trump, he, he'll, you know, if he's excitedly voting for DeSantis over Trump, it's he, he's just playing with words at this point. And now it's yeah. about taxes. Of course, Elon Musk is upset by the Biden administration because the Biden administration is the first ever to put in a base 15% tax on multi-billion dollar companies. Also, for the record, the the Obama-Biden administration is the only reason you know Elon Musk's name more than you know, say, Peter Thiel or somebody. Because Mm -hmm. it is only because of the structure of the Obama bailouts that rescued the economy that Tesla exists at all. The same thing is true of SpaceX. Major government contracts Almost none of the money made in, uh, it, you know, in Elon Musk's wealth is made in the wholly in the private sector. It is an enormous government endeavor. He is a he is a government contractor for SpaceX. Tesla is the same in the same situation. It got an interest free loan that put it ahead of, of its co- competitors just because of timing and the designs by other people. Um, it's an absurdity. For him to like even complain about the Obama Biden administration because without them we wouldn't even know who he is. Secondly, um, the fact that the the Biden administration is moving ahead with making the 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 government the federal fleet of cars electric over the next uh, six years has everything to do with what profitability Tesla was finding for the you know so sure. The, the the dude doesn't exist without giant government contracts. And he's angry yeah. that his giant government contracts, you know, the money he's getting is going to be taxed at 15% like, like capital gains tax. And by the way, all of those companies, even with the baseline 15%, will be able to write off real R&D and other stuff like that. So uh, they're not going to be paying a full 15%. They'll still find ways to get around it. But it's, you know, they the fact that the Biden administration did that is the chipping point. That's it. That's the only reason they want somebody like DeSantis, who they think is going to come in and turn America into Florida. And <laughs> by the way, every cabinet member will be a Florida man. Every every Supreme Court justice will be a Florida man. So, you know, where did you find this Supreme Court justice you're suggesting? Oh, he was eating cheesecake in his underwear in the middle of the Everglades in the middle of the yeah. night. He was, yeah. So that the, those are the folks that DeSantis would bring to Washington. By the way, he's not getting elected. Sorry. You can't have Trump without the mythology of Trump, and that's exactly what DeSantis is trying to be. It doesn't work. Um, but we got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. It's the House Bar uh, Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. I stream five days a week. Uh, yeah, he so, does. You know, yeah, a couple days a week. So go to infotainmentwars.com or twitch.tv slash House Parks. Become a member, support the show, uh, and patreon.com. Thank you, patrons. We'll be back. Philip Bittner is joining us in the second hour in so far as he can. Uh, we will uh, do that. I, I I will say this is the first time I've seen it written uh, like in anywhere that's kind of official, I suppose, about it. That according to Bloomberg, Trump is obligated to make most social media posts on Truth Social as part of his contract with the SPAC that funded the Trump Media and Technology Group, TMTG. Um, which is no surprise to anybody, but um, he they pretend that he does it because it's really popular and it's really great. And the reality is, is that the minute he leaves and goes someplace else, the whole thing collapses. So they, of course, had to put him under oh, yeah. contract to do it. And and the same thing is true of like... So he's uh, contractually obligated to keep posting in that? Yes. He, he has... The, uh, allegedly, there are exceptions in it for political postings once he runs for office. However, oh, you know. even then, it will just be his campaign can post and he can, pa- you know, believe me, if he starts posting on his site as and considers, I mean, what does he say that isn't political? Yeah. Uh, I mean, please. Um, 
Uh, Julie's asking, how are you familiar with Operator Starsky? Yes, I am. In the chat, he's great. He's uh, he's one of the um, Ukraine uh, military bloggers. He's he's a serving military guy that's over there. Um, and I I like his name stood out to me because of Starsky and Hutch, of course. Um, sure. yeah, the Starsky family and is just a preemptive answer. Yes. Phil has heard of him and does not know him. He he, but he know he knows he's seen the actual like videos that he posts online. That right. said, now one of the things that that the the right wing is having a real problem with right now. It's 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 difficult. Is that darn economy keeps on moving right along. It it just every time they turn around, the it won't die like they said it was. You know, remember it was like gas prices are gonna bring down the whole economy. The the you know, even Trump was saying before or slightly right after the uh, midterm elections, the the stock market's going to crash. He said it multiple times. Uh, you watch for it. It's going to. It's bad. The beginning of the year because of the war and because of oil and gas and all that shuffling around. Like this is the worst first three months or first five months of a year and forever. Well, and then the bounce back was even better because, like I said, and some and 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 folks in the in the chat room, back me up on this. If you recall how many times I said that by Thanksgiving, stock market's going to hit, or, or the day after, stock market's going to hit 34000 and that oil would be below $80 a barrel. And because of demand destruction in terms of oil, um, large uh, a large part due to lockdowns in China, but also because the Western world is moving away from that as fast as we can. The idea is consumer vehicles run on electricity, and then you can have trucks that run on diesel and the like. And um, one of our chatters was bringing up earlier that they've hit basically peak need for diesel at this point, and it's starting to arc off and everywhere. Not And, and again, this is part of the world market for these things. And I, I said specifically this, I, I was like, uh, and everybody, uh, uh, my my chat on on the regular show, my record is pretty solid. So a lot of them, you know, were were backing me on this. But I got a bunch of naysayers. Bunch of people mm. were like, there is no way. And this was, I was saying this back when oil was, uh, uh, whatever, $110, $120 a barrel. Because it's it was artificially inflated largely by actions right. of, of the Saudis. There is no reason for it. Um, and uh, Saha is saying, but gas is still up. It is in some places. It's coming down quite a bit. And a lot of that's refinery capacity. It's not the actual cost. It's the it's the throughput, not the input. And the input was what was holding things artificially high for a very long time. So currently, I think somebody just posted it. The stock market today, right now, is 34347 30, uh, and And oil is, wait for it, $76.28, down 2% wow. today, today, folks. And I I, I got to tell you that that is going to be the, the only thing that will buoy um, the price of buoy. oil buoy over the next year or so <laughs> is, yeah. ar- is, a, is artificial um, market pressure put on by the people actually putting it out. The, specifically the OPEC countries, specifically uh, oil producing countries in the rest of the world. You know, uh, countries like Venezuela are trying to squeeze as much as they can by lowering production on purpose or even through, I guess, economic inadequacy on their part. And then, of course, by OPEC just throttling the amount of oil going out just to keep the price artificially up. But the worth isn't there. It's dying on the vine, and largely because Western countries are moving con- consumer vehicles slowly but surely away from, if not complete electricity, to hybrids in mass. So the volume of, you have to think back, like the number of Priuses that came online years ago, that were, you know, or plug-in hybrids, or, or you know, or gas uh, electric hybrids, understand that those cars over the course of their lifetime killed, you know, hundreds of barrels of gasoline that those cars would have needed had they been designed in 1975 or 1985. And that's never coming back. So even people who are buying a used car are buying a car with better efficiency going forward 
to the point where you're going to be able to buy a used Tesla with less range, but it doesn't matter, or a used, uh, you know, Rivian or any of these other companies over the next 10 years that are five years old, but are amazing. Um, and, you know, that's that's going to be consistent. That That is something that is never going to end. And that's the thing that oil producers are, are facing worldwide, including the United States, by the way. It benefits us over time because America's oil you know, dominance or our oil independence is largely about how much we use. The U.S. produces about 18 million barrels a day, but we use, depending on the time of the year, somewhere between 20 and 22 a day. If we can lower how much we produce or how much we use, then the production level over time um, will match our needs. And that's the game. We no longer need to rely on the world market for production. Phil? Yep. Phil's Wait coming in. We see him in there. I've got to create a scene during the break. But this is. Oh, I can do that. I can do it right now. Create a scene? That's no, not make a scene. Look here, you MFers. No, that doesn't work. Oh, I'm suddenly sick you're of all these Jewish people around right. here. All right, no, you you and I have a rule: no Bill O'Reilly impersonations. Okay. Um, we'll do it live. Yes, right. Um, but this is a uh, um, this is a consistent thing. This is, and again, the, more than likely, this the one of the reasons why the stock market is up is because where are you going to put your Christmas money? or your savings or your bonus, if inflation has driven up the part, the price of certain goods, investing in, say, a new computer or something like that, when it's overpriced currently and the price might go down in the future because all technology is deflationary, versus you know, waiting for that, putting your money into a stock, which is artificially deflated by, by monetary circumstance in the United States, and watching it go up is a way smarter thing. So you've got Tons of people who for Christmas are giving people, uh, you know, Apple stock or Google stock or any of the FANG stocks and that kind of stuff, which is what's part of the boost that's happening. And they're going to ride it into the spring and look for a correction and all that stuff. And and I've been talking about this since earlier this year. Can you hear Phil breathing, by the way? Yes, I do. And I'm just saying, <laughs> at least we know he is. That's the important part. Yeah, that's the important part. No, it's not getting out on air, though. It's just between you and I. So oh, it's just both. <laughs> Darn it. Yep. Um, but you know, what I'm, what I'm, you know, what I'm saying is, is I'm, I'm thankful that what I have been saying has turned out to be true yet again. Because <laughs> I, I, I get to enjoy my uninterrupted record, and I also get to remind people that I'm, I've been telling them the, the real story all this time. Now, coming up in the next hour, we're going to be talking a bunch about Ukraine. We're going to have questions taken uh, from the chat. Uh, for our dear friend Philip, who's wearing a scarf because it's chilly there. We'll be back right after Aww. this. It's the House Parks Radio Program Mega Worldwide.